Hello YouTube, I'm the Foam Witch and in this video I'm carrying on from the last one and I'm going to show you how I painted the Captain Carter shield. Now I just want to say that for this video I've upgraded my microphone so let me know if you think the audio is better or you're not really sure, just so I know if I've wasted my money or not. But now I'll get back on track and I'll show you how I painted the shield so let's get to it. So we're going to start off before we paint any foam project and we're going to seal the foam. So for this I'm going to use Hexflex from Polyprops. So the Captain Carter shield has quite a detailed middle design and once I brushed the Hexflex on I then just took a tool to kind of wipe it out of the gaps that I'd scored in just so it doesn't clog them up and the details lost. And as you can see that's just what I'm doing here. Then once those gaps were cleared, I just carried on painting the rest of the shield with the hex flex. Once that layer was fully dry, I then went and applied a second layer. And again, just digging out the score lines so that none of the hex flex fills up the gaps. Now it's time to make this really smooth with some seal prime also from Polyprops. So spraying the front of the shield all over, I used two layers of this seal prime and that's enough to give a really smooth finish ready for painting. Now that the front of the shield is sealed, that's really hard to say, it's now time to work on the back. So I did exactly the same as the front and used the hex flex and the seal prime until I was happy with the finish. I decided I was gonna paint the back of the shield first, so I'm just adding a bit of masking tape to the front to stop any bleed from when I paint the back. So you'll notice here that I stuck the masking tape to my top before I stuck it onto the shield itself. This is just something I do to make the masking tape less tacky, mainly because sometimes it can pull the sealer off the foam project and then you'll have to go and fix the mess. Now it's time from the paint and I'm going to be using the Vallejo airbrush paint, I'm probably not saying that right, and I can't really remember but I think it was the steel colour. These paints always cover really well so I did only have to do one layer of this to get full coverage. Things can go wrong in prop making, but not many people show you that side, but I'm going to. For some reason, this paintwork went really blotchy. I'm not sure if there was an issue with the paint or whether there was grease on the back of the project. Who knows, but it wasn't great and I didn't like the finish, so I did have to do some extra steps I wouldn't have done just to fix this. So to fix this, I used some other items I have in my cosplay making arsenal, which were clear flexi paint, and I mixed it with some silver powder pigments, which I have to really concentrate to say. And I got both of these things from Tig's Supplies. I'm just going over it with my heat gun here just to speed up the drying time a little bit. And then once that was dry, I got the airbrush again with the steel Vallejo paint and went over it. And this really seemed to work. There was no blotching whatsoever. So I was happy with that. So with that little mishap fixed, I can then carry on with painting the front of the shield. To paint the colours on the front, what I used was clear flexi paint and then I mixed that with powder pigment, so red powder pigment and blue powder pigment for the red and blue areas, obviously. And then for the white areas, I again used the flexi paint, but this time I mixed it with Vallejo white airbrush paint, mainly because this white paint is the best covering paint I've ever found if you're going to paint white, which is a horrendous colour to paint. I decided to go with the powder pigment method mainly because painting the shield I thought it would be kind of a more metallic colour rather than a flat colour and using powder pigments does give a metallic finish. Painting all these little detail lines did take me forever because I had to be very careful not to overlap the lines and I had to use teeny weeny little brushes. But I'll do anything for the sake of Captain Carter so it's all good. Once all the colours had had a first layer, it was then time to do multiple layers on the shield and I think I did about four or five layers of every colour. I haven't added it all to this video because I'm pretty sure you're already really bored of watching me paint and it would have just been like hours long, so there you go. You're literally watching a video of paint drying right now, oh my god. One thing I did do when I was painting the middle details is I switched from a brush to a cotton bud as you can see here and I'm dabbing the paint on rather than painting it. The reason I did this is just because it gave it a much better coverage with the paint. The brush was just leaving a lot of brush strokes for my taste so I just made this switch. Using a brush worked absolutely perfectly for the large outer lines of the shield and I'm thrilled about that because if I had to paint those with a cotton bud it would have been going in the bin. 
Once I was happy with the amount of layers of paint I'd done, I then took some of the powder pigment and rubbed it on each section with a sponge. Doing this after the paintwork is finished just adds a bit more of a metallic shine to the paint, so I did this with both the blue and the red. After doing this, and also after using any kind of flexi paint, you need to get some silicone oil and rub it all over the paintwork that you've just done. The reason for this is because flexi paint is slightly tacky when it dries, so this removes any of the tack and it also protects the paintwork. Now the painting is finished, I added these arm straps at the back just so I can hold the shield. And that's it, the shield is complete. So I hope that this video has helped you to be able to paint your own Captain Carter shield. If you're still watching this video up to this point, I just want to thank you so, so much. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy content like this and want to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. That would be incredible. So now this video is finished, I need to go and think of another idea for the next video. So if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see on this channel, please just drop them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. So again, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.